So you want to organize your design project files, but you're not sure how to do it without creating millions of folders and overcomplicating things. You're sick of naming your logo designs final, 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 for real final. <laughs> you're constantly clicking save to desktop instead of having a real folder system. And you're always telling yourself that you'll get around to organizing your files one day, but you never do. Well, that day is today and I'm gonna help you. I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to files and systems. So I'm gonna teach you a simple folder structure that you can use for all of your design projects. A folder structure that won't overwhelm you and it definitely won't overwhelm your clients when you come to hand over these final files to them. Now I do wanna point out that I am talking from the perspective of a brand and website designer. So I'm gonna show you specifically how to create and organize folders for brand and web design projects. Before we get started, I want you to download my freebie, the file organization blueprint, because that will just give you an at a glance look at how I'm doing this so that you won't have to keep re-watching this video. Every time you wanna um, organize things, you'll just need to look at that blueprint. So go to the link in my description of this video and you can download that. Now let's get started. Okay, so as you can see, we're in Google Drive right now, which is my personal preference for saving files because it makes it really easy to securely store files and access them from any device. But I do wanna say that this file organization system will work for you no matter whether you use Google Drive, Dropbox, save files to your own computer, or whatever it may be, this will work for you. So let's dive straight in. Um, first of all, I want you to create a folder called clients and inside create a folder for the year that we're in. So as you can see, I've got folders ranging from 2012 to 2018 because I've been in business since 2012 and it's currently 2018. So once you've done that, I want you to go inside your folder and create folders for your current clients. I also want you to create one folder called proofs and I'll show you what we're going to be using that for near the end of this video. Now open up one of your client folders and create two more folders called website and branding and we'll get started on the branding folder first. Inside the branding folder I want you to create folders for each step in your brand design process. So as you can see I've got folders for the mood board, fonts, main logo, logo variations, submarks, patterns, brand elements, assets, and style guide. And notice I've put a number next to each of them. This basically helps to keep these folders in order all the time. Number your folders in whatever order your process goes in. So it may be different from what mine looks like. Order it how your projects go. Okay, now it's time to create subfolders. So let's get started with number one, mood board. So open that up and create one folder called proofs and one folder called mood board. Before I explain what the proofs folders are, let's just go ahead and create all of the subfolders first. Then I'll show you how to use these folders. In number two, create a proofs folder, body font, headers, and logo folder. In main logo, create a folder for proofs, main logo one and main logo two. In logo variations, do the same thing. Create a folder for proofs, variation one and variation two. Do the same thing for submarks, submark one, submark two, and proofs. In patterns, pattern one, pattern two, proofs. The same goes for brand elements, so it would be brand element one, brand element two, proofs. Then in assets, because the assets are different for each project, so it could be things like photography, illustrator brushes, I tend to not create subfolders because I'm not quite sure what the assets are gonna be for each project. You can just organize your assets into subfolders at the end of the project. And I also don't create subfolders for the style guide folder because that's just basically where I put the client's style guide at the end of the project and nothing else really goes in there except for that. So there's no need for subfolders, but you can put the client's brand board in there along with the style guide if you choose to. Now remember I created a proofs folder for each of these folders. I wanna show you how this works. So let's open up the mood board folder and I'll show you an example. The proofs folder is where you'll save all proofs, AKA mockups that you send to the client for revisions. Like this, for example. You can see I've got mood board one, 
mood board two and mood board final. So once I've sent the client the first mood board, I would name that mood board one so they can keep track of revisions. So the second mood board, once I've made that revision, I would call it mood board two. Whatever the final mood board is, I would stick final onto the end of the file name so that I know which one is final and I don't have to hunt through my files and um, trying to figure out which one is final because I didn't name them well enough. That's not what you wanna do. So name them clearly like this. And then what's gonna happen is when the client has decided on a final file, you'll simply move it from the proofs folder to the appropriate final folder. So here, the final mood board, you would simply right click, click move to, go out of the proofs folder and click mood board. You'll do that for each of your folders. So you'll do that for your mood board folder, your main logo folder, and so on. At the end of the project, what you'll end up with is um, inside of all these folders, all of your mockups will all be in the proofs folders. So you will simply right click on proofs, click move to, go out, go out of the branding folder, out of your clients folder, and back into the yearly folder where remember I asked you to create a proofs folder. And you will move all of these in here. So click proofs, click the client's name inside of proofs, and click move. Now I want you to go through the branding folder and do this for each of these folders so that at the end of the project, all you'll be left with is inside this folder, you'll have all of the final files. And then to get to all of the mockups that you created, you would just go into the proofs folder and you'll have all of your mockups in here separate to the final files. This is handy because it means that once you've done that, you can simply um, wait for your client to give you the final payment and then you can right click, click share, and then you can share that folder with the client without worrying that they're also going to have access to the mockups that you created. They'll just have access to the final files this way. And it's a really neat and organized system for them. Okay, now let's move on to the website folder. So if you're a web designer as well as a branding designer, this part's going to apply to you too. And before I move on, I just wanna say, don't forget to grab yourself the file organization blueprint. The link is below this video. That way, when you're organizing your files, you can simply see this system at a glance by using the blueprint. It's really, really handy. So let's crack on with the website folder. Let's go back into the client folder now we've just finished the branding folder, so let's go inside the website folder and arrange that one. I want you to create three folders. Number one, wireframes, number two, website mockups, and number three, assets. And inside of those folders, I want you to create subfolders. So we'll start with number one, create the subfolder proofs. Number two, inside of website mockups, I want you to create a subfolder called proofs. And in number three, I want you to create folders for proofs, fonts, and images. This organization system works exactly the same as the branding folder did. So you would, you would save all of your revisions to the proofs folder, like this. And you would name them revision one, revision two, so that you can always keep track of which file is which. And your final file, you would name wireframe underscore final, or um, website underscore final. And then what you'll do with the final files is you'll move all of them out of the proofs folder. So you'll simply right click, click move to, go out of the proofs folder, click save. And then you'll move all of the proofs folders inside of your website organization system right back into your core proofs folder. And that is it. If you want a really easy way to copy this, download my free folder organization blueprint. The link's below this video. You'll be able to see at a glance how to organize your folders. I hope this video has helped you to understand a great way to organize your design project files. If you like it and you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and if you have any questions at all, please feel free to put them in a comment below this video, and I'll personally reply to all of them. See you guys next week.